I've been making these decorations for my son's bedroom wall. The original ones were just a flat piece of wood painted with glossy oil paint. This bat signal even has a space behind it where I attached a row of yellow LEDs that serves as a nice night light for him. And then I came up with this other technique where I start to layer the wood so the back pieces are against the wall and then this front piece is a couple of inches out from the wall and that creates a nice space behind it to put the LED lights. I also did that layering technique with the flash. He's colored with permanent markers as well. So people have been asking for a demo, how do I make these? And I decided I would switch it up a little bit and this time I'm doing a stormtrooper and that's what this video is about. The first step that I always do in making a wall hanging like this is to go out and Google images and find all of the examples that might lend themselves to making a good 3D layer. So I put this set of eight images up on Facebook for my friends to vote on it and the majority of them like this image number six. So that's the one I went with. So it's a member of the First Order and while I like it, it's not the original Stormtrooper. I like their helmets the best because that's what I grew up with. Uh, so I decided I would modify this and to add a splash of color I figured I'd put a shoulder pad on it. So I found this image and this guy has a, a really nice shoulder pad on it. And then I needed a different helmet. I needed the original helmet and this one is nice because he is tilting his head forward. So I took that the shoulder pads, this new helmet, and then I use an app called Sketch Club. So this is what I was able to come up with. So once you have an image that you like, then you need to think about layering it and how you're going to cut the, the wood into different layers to create that 3D effect. Again, in Sketch Club, I went in and I drew these red lines at the, the joints where, where I would cut the wood and create the layering effect. So I always start with the layer that's closest to the wall and number it one. So this foot is the piece that will be farthest back. And then his ankle and lower leg would be layer number two. And then coming forward is three. And then we come up to his lower body, four. That's this whole area right here. And then coming further more, we've got five for the chest, six for the shoulder, and then seven for the helmet. So the helmet is the closest to us. I hook my computer up to a projector, a video projector, and there it is on the wall. The next step is to uh, take that image where I've mapped out all of the layering and I need to come into the tracing on the paper and mark the divisions where I plan to make the cuts in the wood. All right, before I actually cut these out, I'm gonna take a marker and do a couple of hash marks across all of the places that I'm going to cut and that just helps me line it up again later when I need to. I've finished cutting out all of the pattern pieces and one thing that you have to keep in mind is that because we're making this with layers, the pieces of wood are on top of each other, you have to plan for how the wood from the back layers pass behind the front layers. So for example, the helmet is layer 7, it's the layer closest to us, and then this layer immediately behind it is layer 6. So the pattern would normally stop here for the helmet, but I've added this extra piece of paper and taped it on, so when I cut it out of the wood, it gives us this extra piece of wood where they can be glued and screwed together. So any time that there's a layer that goes behind another one, so this is layer 2, it goes behind layer 3, you have to have that extra piece of wood planned for. Three goes behind four and so This next step is pretty straightforward. You uh, lay out all of your pattern pieces on your wood and you trace them with a dark marker or whatever you want. The wood that I've chosen to use is quarter inch um, press board or chip board. You know the tiny particles of wood that have been glued together. Mainly I use it because it's what I can find here in Kenya. So I hold the paper steady and make these short lines around there.
I've traced all the patterns and now I need to cut them out. I use this jigsaw or saber saw. The blade that I'm using is labeled scroll cut. It's not very wide and that allows me to make the tight curves when I'm cutting around these intricate pieces. And you just have to be very precise when you're cutting these. When I traced it, the inside that doesn't have the marker on it is what I want to have left. So when I cut, I make sure the blade stays on the outside of that and I only take away the marker that I laid out on the wood. I've cut out all of the pieces from the wood and now it's time to sand it. I don't have to sand the edges that will be underneath another layer of wood. So before I start to sand them, I find the pattern to match the piece and then I mark where the wood will pass underneath another piece of wood. That way I know I don't have to sand this entire edge going around here, which will save me some time because some of those pieces are a lot bigger than this small foot. I sand it by hand and I, the parts that are going to be visible, I give it a nice curved edge so it just kind of rolls around to the side. I also like to sand the edge that was cut. It'll take the paint better if I just give it a quick sand. I also like to give a quick sand to the surface that will ultimately be painted. And then the bottom side, I just give all of the edges a quick sanding, not as thorough as the top, just a quick one so they're not quite so jagged. And now to do 15 more pieces for this stormtrooper. After I've sanded all the pieces, I like to lay them out in roughly the way that they're going to go together so I can plan the steps for assembling them to make sure I glue and screw them together in the right order so I don't run into any problems later on. This one's a little more complicated than most because of the way this middle area overlaps. This is the left arm and the pattern pieces to go with the left arm. I use the patterns and, and line them up with the pieces of wood and then overlap them so I can see where the pieces originally fit together by lining these up I can make sure that I get them pretty close to the way they were originally. Once I have them lined up I flip it over being careful not to let the pieces slip and then I put at least three screws through, I drill three holes Then I like to mark where the two pieces fit together. And now I can apply glue to the area that will receive where they overlap. This is just wood glue, carpenter glue. Glue on both pieces to make sure it really binds. And then with the pencil mark already there, it makes it easier to line it up. And when I put the screws in, the, the holes that I've already drilled helps uh, pull it into place if I'm off by a little bit. Just want to make sure that the screws you buy are not longer than the two layers of wood that you're going to be joining. Also, put a little plastic guide on my drill bit so I can drill up to that point and I know that the drill won't poke through the other side of the wood. There it is. It's all assembled, glued and screwed at all of the layers. Where the chest meets the abdomen right across here, I did not glue this layer yet. Um, 
because when it comes time to paint it, I want to be able to remove this back piece, the legs and the abdomen, so I can paint it. Otherwise, I can't get back behind the gun here to do a proper paint job. Here it is flipped over, and you can see the layering. This foot is the farthest back, so it will actually be touching the wall. And all of the other layers go forward from there. So I have to think about uh, putting some spacers at a few key spots to keep it out from the wall. I also have to think about hanging it properly. Now, in order to hang it, this spot right here up by the head has three layers thick so I can get a couple of good screws through there. I made this, and to determine how tall that had to be, I looked at the layers here. This layer is the same as this layer, and this point needs to stick up as high as the foot that's touching the wall. So I bent this old piece of aluminum and drilled a couple of holes through it. So when it's screwed onto this layer, that part will stick out and be flush with the wall. To determine where to attach this hook on the back, I hold, I hold it from the top and find the right spot that keeps him upright or at the angle that I want him to be. It seems to be right about here, so the leg is at a slight angle, the helmet is straight up and down. So from there I can go straight down on the back and I'll attach the hook in just about that spot. If I look at it back here, right below where my finger is, right in that area. I also like to attach a screw at the extreme points, out on the arms and the legs, with a little rubber stopper on the end. That way it keeps this the right distance from the wall. So this is, there are different lengths, and that's all to get this rubber stopper up to the point matching the highest layer. So all of these rubber stoppers will be touching the wall along with this foot and that hook. Next, I paint the front and back with a coat of primer. Be sure to paint the edges, too. After the primer has dried, you want to paint it with a gloss white paint. Now, the back probably only needs one coat, but the front and edges, you'll want at least two, maybe three coats of paint to get it nice and smooth. That way it will take the, the permanent marker or paint better and give you a nice smooth finish. After the paint has dried, you can go in and add all the details. I like to use permanent markers because they dry very quickly. It's better to do colors first and then go in and add the black Afterwards, if you do the black first and then you try to get the color up against the edge of the black, it tends to bleed together and muddy up the colors. So if you can, do the colors first and then you go back afterwards and put the black over the top because the black, even if it absorbs a little of the color, you don't see it. I use rubbing alcohol and I like to soak the marker in it and this kind of thins it out and helps it to apply better. I freehand most of it. If I find a section that has a lot of detail, maybe I'll make a small template from the original pattern, but I like to freehand it, and I generally start with the easiest stuff to get practiced at it. And then once I feel like I've got the hang of it, I go in and I do the areas with the most detail last, like typically the face. And I'm just gonna eyeball it and decide that it kind of goes from here down to there. And then I will go back and fill it in. There is a small section here, but I'm just going to go ahead and go over it with the orange because I can always just go right over the top of it with the black later on when I need to. I was able to get a good solid orange color on the shoulder pad, and now I can come in with the black and start to do the details around the shoulder pad and move on and do the rest of the outfit.
So there they are, the top and bottom half. Now I just need to connect them together. If you want to add a backlight, it's really not too difficult. You can get these rolls of LED lights from Amazon for maybe 10 bucks. And they come in a variety of colors, either single colors or multicolored strips that you can change to any color of the rainbow. And there's a, an adhesive strip on the back, and because this is painted with a gloss paint, it will stick on pretty well. I've got mine hooked up to a battery, although most of them come with an adapter so you can plug it into the wall. And there it is. And finally, the finished Stormtrooper. He stands just over four feet tall. It took me about 10 hours to make.